So this video is for the beginners amongst us. It's people that are looking to get started selling on Amazon FBA. Now, I can imagine you probably find this very daunting. You you don't know where to start. There's so many people telling you different things like drop shipping, wholesale, private label, um, all these different things, right? And you're just, you're, you're confused, right? I want to help you get a clarity on that, all right? So let me, let me explain. If I was starting Amazon again today, right? The very, very first thing I would do is actually set up my business, okay? So I would go and set up a limited liability company, right? In either my home country. So for example, if you're in Ireland, set up in Ireland. If you're in the UK, set up in the UK. And the purpose of this company, this vehicle, would be to run your Amazon businesses. All your money that you make from products goes into that business. All the products you buy um, for your Amazon business happens from that company as well. Um, and it's really, really simple. Just to set up a company. You would then get like a bank account, um, debit card, um, and then set up your Amazon Seller Central account, all in the name of the company. Okay, I actually recommend as well just um, using Wise or Revolut. I'll put some affiliate links down below, but I actually recommend that. Like traditional banks take so long to set up, whereas the latter two, really, really quick, absolutely perfect for what we want. And actually better because you can convert money from, say, euro or sterling to U United States dollars. So go for that, right? But right, that's what I do. So get my company and all set up. I have a list here, right? I, I wrote. Um, the next thing I would do, actually, and I'll be completely honest, find a mentor or find a system that you can model, that you can re replicate. There's so much to learn in this game that it's actually very hard to do it on your own and not make mistakes. Like, of course you can do it on your own. Of course you can figure all this out. But it really comes down to how quickly do you want this to happen? Like if you're not in a panic and you want to say, I'm going to take three years to figure this out. Great. Do it on your own. But if not, I recommend finding a mentor or some sort of program that you can follow. And the benefit of having the company is that, you know, the company can invest in that training on your behalf. And then when you make pro profit proceeds, that can be taken out of the company tax free. So I'd recommend that as, a, as an option use the company to invest in training so you guys can learn how to do this properly, right? The next thing, right, it's kind of logical, but the next thing is to master product research. Now, this is something that you really need to figure out. So what I recommend and what I do, like, and I practice what I preach, I recommend private label. Now, this is where you take a product, and you put your barcode onto that product, all right? Now, this means it's your product, no one else can sell it, you know, you protect yourself against a lot of the things you see happening on Amazon with wholesale and all these sort of other models whereby you're selling someone else's product on the platform. What often happens is that, well, first of all, it's highly competitive, so people are like adjusting pricing by the penny inside the buy box, and that's affecting your returns, right? Because you don't always have the buy box. Um, people are changing the listing. Um, there's a lot of things that just aren't, are less than ideal. I prefer when I create a listing, I'm in charge of the creative, I'm in charge of the copy, and I'm in charge of the pricing strategy. Because often the race to the bottom doesn't benefit anyone. Benefits the customer. But like, as, as sellers, and we're sellers here, um, it doesn't benefit us. So ultimately, I would always go down the route of private label, but you need to understand the research methodologies, like how to identify good opportunities. The amount of times people have come to me and said, oh, you know, is this a good product? And I'm like, no, I wouldn't go down that route, right? So you really want to understand how to assess a marketplace and determine whether a product is viable or not in terms of profitability, in terms of can I actually sell this? Like, is there a patent or a trademark on it? Um, you know, is this the best product for me to launch day one? Is maybe the product 
like large in terms of packaging like is it going to be is it going to be a lot of cost to move this product around like all these things you just need to learn how to quickly assess this so again it sort of comes back to the mentor or the or the or the model to follow just apply that and learn that so then you can go and you can just like i can go now and i like i could go right now and i could find a potential product within 15 20 25 minutes i i've no doubt right and when i say potential i mean one that i'm like okay this looks promising now i need to go to alibaba and actually you know talk to suppliers and actually figure out like you know is this viable and that's actually the next point i want to bring up is get used to speaking with suppliers as well and um, know what you need to be looking for so you need to be looking for like certain pricing terms for example fob you need to be looking for that and um, you need to be need to know what type of packaging to request so like you know for example you don't want a product to get damaged in transit um and a lot of times that happens because the packaging is inadequate so you need to be aware of that so you can make sure the supplier makes the product in a way that that doesn't become an issue for you because remember these products have been created for us so they'll make it whatever way you want right so ultimately you need to make sure you tell them the way you need it because what i find with dealing with often dealing with chinese suppliers is that leave nothing to chance leave nothing to you know ah, it'll be okay it may not so make sure you get it right by negotiating exactly what you want when you're getting that quotation okay um and i think it's also worth bearing in mind like you have to be prepared to invest in samples um to make sure that product is okay as well so i would always do that before i place an order um 100 but the, the lingo of dealing with supplier that's something you get practice with and ultimately like there's millions of products out there so you know pick a random product and start practicing the conversation trying to get the best deal negotiate get the the best pricing the best moq they don't bite they want to do business with you and um, so you just start that practice now don't don't hold off and that means when you're actually pricing multiple products at once you actually get the best price and you actually find the best product and again remember that the supplier is there to you know they want to build a long-term relationship right that's what they want to do they want to build that relationship with you um it's not about oh, it's not all about price it's about that relationship so really respect them as as humans because they really want to serve you um and so they do so yeah i get your amazon seller central account set up as well I, i'd always do that in tandem with the research process with the supplier outreach just be getting that in the background but you can't do that till you have your business and your bank account and your debit cards for the business all set up but then set up your amazon seller central account in whatever market you're going to be selling in so for example if you're going to be selling in europe and the uk set up your amazon seller central in europe and the uk if you're going to be selling in the us as well set up a us amazon seller central or vice versa if you're just going to be selling in the us set up your us seller central just get all that thing working away in the background because sometimes there's delays and we don't want anything to hold us back when it comes to actually placing our actual order and actually that reminds me at that point i would also make sure like for example if i'm in the uk i would get my e o or i number set up i would also go and get my amazon global logistics account set up just all these things get all these things that we can do get them done get all the paperwork done in the background of you learning a model you learn how to research if you contact and suppliers just just so nothing can just stop you you know at that point once i've identified okay this is the product i'm going with okay i would actually go and get a trademark okay and don't pick something that is very similar to a huge company's uh, trademarked material ip pick something that's fairly random but sounds good okay <laughs> if that makes sense um i wouldn't necessarily overthink it but for example if you're building a range of products in a certain niche i would try to make sure the trademark is is related to that niche sounds like it could fit in because really what you're doing with a trademark is first of all you're protecting your ip so no one else can sell under that that's your brand right for example you couldn't sell an apple computer as your own because that's owned by apple the same way with the, with the trademark you're creating no one else could sell under that as well it's owned by by you right and um, but also it's building something that you could potentially sell you may never sell it but you potentially could i remember when i first started on amazon i didn't really give that much thought and i just picked a random trademark completely random um, and i tested some products under that trademark and it was great they sold but 
I never would sell those products under that trademark as a as an entity. Like, oh, here you can buy that. It just it didn't make sense. Whereas now, you know, I give a little bit more thought to the trademarks. So I I actually have a bank of trademarks now, and depending on where a product kind of fits, it goes into a certain trademark or a certain brand. Okay, um, a little recommendation if you're kind of confused on this, I would recommend ChatGPT and just give it as much information about the range of products you want to create and ask it for 20, 30, 40 trademark ideas. And just keep reiterating that till you find one that works. Then check it to make sure that it doesn't infringe on anything. And then there's your trademark. It shouldn't take you more than maybe an hour or so, right? And that kind of reminds me then too, right? I Once the product comes in and starts selling, right? We need to think about a, a launch. Sorry, we need to think about a launch strategy. And as part of that, I think about creative. So don't be afraid to invest in creative. So in terms of images, in terms of copy that's optimized, in terms of, um, well, yeah, that's really it in terms of creative <laughs> copy that's optimized. Really invest in that because that is your storefront. That's what can, that's what makes people buy your product. Like once they land on your page, it's really good images. It's good reviews. But like let's think about the images for now and the copy. That's what's going to convince someone to buy the product because they can't physically lift it up. So they're going to be looking at those things. So it's really important, especially if you can see the competition is really high quality. You know, you're going to need to go that extra mile, not just on pricing, not just on um, fulfillment, but maybe on creative as well. You can have bad creative. Now, if the competition is poor creative, um, this is even better for us because it means that we're really going to stand out. So again, just bear that in mind. Really good creative, really good copy. Um, I, I would highly recommend, right? And again, you want to incorporate into your launch strategy ways to, you know, make sure you get really good reviews. Again, we I cover stuff on a previous video about reviews. So like ultimately that you get plenty of positive reviews because that's really important because it, it actually encourages customers to actually purchase the product. All right. Again, what I also like to think about at this point is inventory management. So once we get an idea of run rate, so we, we know that we're selling, like at the beginning you launch a product, it's very unlikely that it's going to sell, just start selling straight away, like 10 a day, 15 a day. It's just probably not going to happen. Can, but it's probably not, right? So expect it to be kind of quiet at the beginning, right? So maybe one sale, then nothing for two days, then two, then three, then nothing for a few days, then four, one, you know, like this, right? Like generally, I think a product usually takes about three weeks to get into the system, but it can be much quicker. We launched a product about two weeks ago um, and the creative wasn't even finished, right? Um, it's finished now, but it was, the product arrived a few days early and the product went live and the first day we got a sale or two and then, you know, it just ramped up and when five days we're doing 12 sales a day. Like, and I, I think that product's going to go a lot more. I think it could go to 20 sales a day. Like that, now that's pretty epic, right? But that's, that's not necessarily normal, but it's pretty good to see, okay? Um, so just get an idea of that run rate, right? And then very quickly, even before your product runs out, if you know like, okay, I'm selling four a day, I'm selling six a day or whatever it is, right? You want to figure out how many you need to order to have like three months worth of stock, right? And you may get this figure wrong, but you need to go and actually order that product before it sells out. Okay, pay the deposit, get the production rolling because I've often made this mistake where products selling really well, but I don't keep an eye on this and then it runs out of stock. So then I lose sales, I lose ranking. I have to build all that up again when the product comes back in. So this time I recommend, and what I want to recommend for you guys is figure out that run rate and then keep the product in stock. Okay. Now at this point, once I have that figured out and I kind of, you know, it's all going well, there's two things I would do. Number one, I would look for associated products where there's potentially opportunity as well. So it could be a different version. It could be different pack size. It could be something related. Just, you know, that you can fit into this niche where you can put your product, right? So 100%, that's what I would do. I would also start looking at, you know, is there other markets that I can expand into? Now you can pick, you can do both of these at once or you could just do one of them. You could say, look, I'm staying in the UK or I'm staying in the US. I'm just going to expand it out, build it here. And once it's established here, then I will expand into the other markets, right? So you just need to decide that. Ultimately, I recommend <clears throat> as best you can to try and expand as well because you could discover that, oh, this product is really popular in this country. But you could also discover that, you know, it's not as popular in this other market, right? A pretty cool thing is that Amazon will actually ship your goods. So if you're in the your goods in the US, they'll ship it to Canada um, and they'll ship it to Mexico and other markets as well. Um, likewise, if you have goods in the UK, they'll ship it to Europe and vice versa, right? Um, the rates and the speeds and stuff isn't as... Um, 
positive as it would be if the goods were actually held in those locations. But, you know, it's simpler, especially beginning to have goods in less locations. But again, this is all stuff you can decide along with like whatever model you're following and um, and see. But ultimately, that is private label in a nutshell. That's how the whole thing works. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's what I do. I literally, I buy products, I test them, I add more products and just expand, expand, expand. Um, if you're interested in learning more about this, just go up to my bio. There's links to ways we can work together very affordable we kind of i kind of work it in a way that you know really you guys can't lose but see if they're a fit for you um any questions down below please leave them and subscribe and i'll, I'll keep sharing stuff for you guys but enjoy and you can do it so go for it all right take care